So in this problem, we are asked to determine the magnitude of the resultant force acting on the screw eye and its direction measured clockwise from the x-axis. So we are getting this figure. So we have two ropes connected to the screw eye. And we have uh, a rope that's being pulled with a force of 2 kilonewton at a direction of 45 degree from the x-axis and the second rope is being pulled at a force of 6 kilonewton at a direction of 60 degree. We will use the uh, parallelogram uh, theory or law to find the uh, resultant force so before we use this let uh, let us introduce ourselves to the parallelogram geometry properties so this is a parallelogram from its name parallel that means we have parallel sides so let's say you we have this parallelogram where let's change to white you have A, B, C, D. So AB is parallel to DC and they have the same direction. DA is parallel to side CB and they have the same direction. So this is the first property. The second property is opposite sides are congruent congruent mean the same so a b length is the same as d c length of d a is the same as the length of c b opposite angles are congruent so that means that angle d is equal to angle b Angle A is equal to angle C. Consecutive angles add up to 180. So, for example, the measure of angle D plus the measure of angle A, they add up to 180 degree. Similarly, the measure of angle D plus the measure of angle C also equal to 180 degree. So adjacent angle or consecutive angles, they add up to 180. Interior angles of a parallelogram is 360 degree. Diagonals bisect each other. So if let's let's draw diagonals, they are not ex exactly good but anyway. So we and they intersect at point E. So that means that AE have the same length as EC, and DE have the same length as EB. Another thing is alternative angles also equal each other. So let's choose another color. So this angle will equal to this angle. Let's choose another color, a yellow. So let's say this angle will equal to this angle. All right, so these are the properties of parallelogram. So now let's let's create. So first thing, let's draw a free body diagram. Drawing a free body diagram is important because it simplifies the problem and it makes us visualize the problem better. So always make sure that your first step is to draw a free body diagram. Next, we will create a parallelogram. And that's what we have done. So here, 
the force vector of uh, magnitude 2 kilonewton and a direction of 45 is parallel to this uh, line. And the force vector of 6 kilonewton of direction 60 uh, degree is parallel to this line. So these two lines are parallel. Another, uh, so we said also that opposite sides, uh, they equal each other. So this side length magnitude is the same as this magnitude. And this magnitude is the same as this magnitude. So here we draw two parallel lines. These two lines intersect at point B to form the adjacent sides of the parallelogram. So now let, let us find the resultant force. So here we have created a diagonal. The diagonal of this parallelogram that extends to point B forms the resultant force FR which then represent the resultant vector, the, which is 6 kilonewton plus the 2 kilonewton vector. So we moved the 2 kilonewton vector with its direction 45 to this side. So we created an, an like a, like an imaginary x-axis, and with the same direction and the same length, and we used head to tail fashion to add these two vectors. So we uh, so so this is called the triangle rule, which is a special case of the parallelogram law whereby vector force of magnitude 6 kilonewton is added to vector force of magnitude 2 kilonewton in a head-to-tail fashion. So this is the tail and this is the head. So what we did here is we redraw a half portion of the parallelogram to illustrate the triangle head to tail addition of the force component. Now, realize that this is 60 degree. Why? Because alternative angles, as we mentioned in the beginning, they equal each other. So since this is 60, this is 60. So if this is 70, this will also be 70. So, so after we redraw a half portion of the parallelogram, now we will label all the known and unknown force magnitudes and angles on the sketch. So, uh, the, we know that the resultant force direction is measured clockwise from the x-axis. So I decide to call this angle theta and you can call this angle whatever you want. Um, we have two angles here, and you can call them whatever you want. These two angles are unknown angles. I decide to call this alpha and this gamma. And we put the, the, the angles that we know. We know that this is 60. We know this is 105. We entered the magnitude of the... Uh, two forces so now we are ready to find the magnitude and the direction of the resultant force so first we will find the magnitude of the resultant force so we will use cosine law because we know two sides the 6 kilonewton and the 2 kilonewton and the angle between them which is opposite to the uh, resultant force which is the side that we want to find its magnitude uh, so we cosine law cosine law state that the angle that uh, sorry the side that you want to find equal to the square root of the two known sides a and b so a square plus b square minus 2ab cosine c c is the angle 
the angle that is opposite to the resultant force or to or the angle opposite to the side that you want to find in our case is the resultant force so we plug in the known values and it will give us a resultant force of 6.8 kilo newton now we want to find the direction theta of the resultant force fr all right so what we will do is that we want to rewrite theta and alpha in terms of uh, an alpha and gamma in terms of theta because theta is the angle that describes the direction of the resultant force so we know that the addition of these three is will will give us 180 degree so 60 plus alpha plus theta is 180 degree so here we we will use the this information so alpha is 180 minus 60 plus theta we will open the parentheses and it will give us minus 60 degree minus theta so alpha equal so 180 degree minus 60 is 120 minus theta similarly we will do the same thing for gamma now we know that the sum of the interior angle of a triangle is 180 so this is 180 so to find gamma we, we will subtract it from 105 plus alpha so now we will open the parentheses so it will be 180 degree minus 105 degree minus alpha 105 108 minus 105 will give us 75 degree minus alpha now we are interested in finding these angles in terms of theta the direction of the resultant force so we will replace theta with 120 degree minus alpha so we did that now we will open the parentheses so 75 minus 120 degree plus alpha so that so gamma will be minus 45 degree plus alpha and so now we can rewrite as this sketch shows gamma in this form and alpha in this form all right so now we will find the angle theta by using the law of sine so the law of sine is the side divided by the sign of its opposite angle this ratio of every side is the same so b over sine b c over sine c here we flipped upside down the fraction we can use the law of sine to find unknown angles it is best to flip the fraction upside down we want when we want to find unknown angles so that's what we have done we can choose any of uh, any of the uh, two where we can have three knowns and one unknown so uh, the sine c which is in our case the resultant force so we have the we have the magnitude we have the magnitude we have the uh, sign that is uh, the angle which is opposite to the resultant force and or it's which is 105 6.8 and you can choose b to be whatever value two or six and the and the other one will be the so if you choose b to be two then a to be six and vice versa and we have the third known and now we need to find alpha all right so sine 105 degree divided by 6.8 will give you 0 
we now we will take 2 to the opposite side of the equation since it was division it will go to the other side as a multiplication we will do we will multiply so it's sine alpha is equal to 0 0.284 now we can solve for alpha so alpha equal to the inverse sine of 0 0.28 now make sure your calculator is set to degree instead of radiant mode all right so if your if your calculator is set to degree mode it will give you 16.5 but if your calculator is set to radiant mode then the answer will be 0 0.288 all right if you are not able to change the mode in your calculator then use the conversion factor and this is the conversion factor that we're talking about where one radiant is equal to 180 degree divided by pi where the radiant will cancel with the radiant so if you're uh, so if you are not able to find the magnitude of your force then what you can do uh, you can convert them by remembering that one radiant is equal to 180 degree divided by pi and it will give you the answer 16.5 so let's plug the gamma value to the gamma formula that we have found which is gamma equal to 120 minus theta so gamma replace it with 16.5 degree equal to 120 degree minus alpha so 120 will go to the other side of the equation it will be minus minus 120 degree plus 16.5 equal to minus alpha we will add these two numbers and they will give us minus 103.5 equal to minus alpha we can multiply both sides by negative and the negative will cancel so alpha uh, sorry theta will be one of 103.5 now you can do this as an exercise so instead of uh, sine b over b you can say sine a over a equal to sine c over c now we see here we use 2 kilonewton and the opposite angle is alpha in this case you can use 6 kilonewton and the opposite angle is gamma and you can redo these steps and instead of using the alpha equation that we have found you can use the gamma equation instead of it i hope you find this helpful thank you very much for watching